Chapter 11 Chris and Jeremy kissed their mother goodbye and walked out of the house. It was their routine. Virginia showed them to the door every morning. The other kids ragged on them about it on occasion, but they didn't let it get to them. The bottom line on their parents was simple. Practically every kid they knew wanted to belong to Thomas and Virginia. Having the coolest parents in town raised the McKee brothers' popularity. Virginia ruffled Jeremy's hair as he slid past her. He frowned, and she was quick to apologize. I know, Virginia stated, chastising herself before he did. It's hard enough to keep your hair under control without me messing it up, right? She leaned against the door jam in anticipation of his response. Well, it is, Jeremy scowled. He looked at her with accusation. Why did I have to get the wiry hair anyway, huh? Tell me that. He walked backward with his arms held out to his sides. He was confident he knew their yard well enough to keep going without incident. He hadn't counted on Chris stopping short. Jeremy collided with his brother in the middle of the yard and almost fell. He would have, too, if Chris hadn't grabbed him by his backpack. He swung his brother around so he faced the bus stop. Jeremy hung there like a side of beef about to protest this man handily until he spotted what caused Chris to stop short in the first place. Oh, nuts, Jeremy groaned, his eyes locked on a kid at the bus stop who didn't belong there. What's he doing here? I'll give you three guesses, Chris said, adjusting his glasses. They were transition lenses, already darkened by the morning sun. No thanks, Jeremy replied. There was only one reason Dabney Copeland would be at their bus stop when his stop was up Satchel Hill at the corner of Textile Road. He heard Dan's rumor. Jeremy growled under his breath. Chris patted him on the shoulder. No trouble, he said. He's not worth it. No, Jeremy agreed. He's not. Their bus stop was diagonally across from their house, where Satchel Hill met Points of Light Road. Matt Gardner was strategically standing on the opposite corner from Dabney. Henry and Herman Schwartz lived on Points of Light Road near Matt. They stared at Dabney as he spoke to them in hushed tones. It was evident by the way Henry looked at Chris that Dabney was telling them everything. Jeremy had the sudden urge to punch him in the face. Dabney would see the rumor got all over town as fast as possible just to be a douche. Jeremy didn't think he had it in him to hate anyone. If he did, Dabney would be number two on his list of people to hate first, right after Dan for what he was doing to Chris. Herman was Jeremy's age. They were in the same classes, with Dabney, and on the same baseball team. He looked confused. Henry was a senior, and Chris's co-worker. In contrast to his brother, Henry looked positively disgusted. Dabney shut his mouth when he saw the McKees approaching. He stood there with his arms crossed. In unrestrained arrogance, he was ready for them. There was nothing he liked better than a confrontation, especially with the deck stacked in his favor. Chris and Jeremy walked past him without saying a word. Herman broke away and followed them. That's the ticket, Matt thought. Screw Dabney. He's not worth the hassle. My mom isn't even as annoying as he is. He shook his head. God, was I walking on eggshells around her this morning.